Welcome back to the podcast, everybody, and good morning. I'm on the horrible coffee. I won't even talk about it. I'm in Asia. I'm away from my machine. So I'm not at this beautiful beach in the background, Mooloolaba, hence the green screen. So you're not looking at the hotel fridge and everything in the background here. So um, yeah, nice place. Hello from, uh, from warm Asia. And uh, today's podcast about board meetings, running effective board meetings, and any meeting, really, any management meeting, you'll benefit uh, on this podcast. It's the same process. And uh, inspired, I must say, this podcast by Harry Stebbings, the host of the 20 Minute VC podcast. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. I've been watching those, I think, since maybe episode 25, something like that. And then when he got to 200, uh, celebrated together, became friends and uh, kept in touch ever since. So big shout out to Harry, 20 Minute VC. He's gone on to fulfill his career, dream of becoming a venture capitalist without uh, going and studying economics and everything at uni. He's just cut straight through with a beautiful path and uh, contributing so much knowledge to the ecosystem. And uh, did trigger me when he was just talking about board meetings and how to frame them as the CEO or you know, the person who's hosting the meeting with the audience there to help. So uh, you'll get a lot out of that. Big shout out to Harry and uh, hopefully he'll uh, shout me a mojito, one of his famous uh, mojitos, mojito at, uh, at the end of this, uh, if he gets to see it himself. But um, let me dive in to share my screen. Okay, so this is what went out to you guys on the email. So framing and then collaboration and best practices for running the board meetings, particularly the chairperson's role and then cascading, so just on my, and cascading execution. So a way that directors can see what's going on. So by way of background, I ran a venture capital fund as well. And um, unlike Harry decided that's not the career for me, I'm better on the founder side and executing, but I did learn a lot. And in the process hired probably the number one authority on board meetings and governance in Australia. So he was teaching the Institute of Company Directors. I'd come here from the UK, I'm Australian, but come back hired him and then he was a personal coach for a year, including coming along to the board meetings that I was uh, MD of, not, not chairing, but MD of, and therefore, you know, doing what we're going to talk about in this meeting and he would critique and everything else. So I learned a lot from him and, uh, and you'll see that come out in the, in the uh, Warren Tappers, his name to give full credit. Okay. So let's dive in. And here I've set up the meeting card and I want to talk about this framing the challenge concept that Harry just spoke to beautifully the other day saying, look, it's your meeting to get the most out of it. You've got attendees coming, whether they're fellow directors or advisors, consultants or team colleagues or team members, doesn't matter who it is, just making sure you get frame the challenge and get them preparing for the meeting properly. So we're just going to focus on that first. So you can see here, Mary here, who is the CEO, perhaps I'm the chairman, and we've got this meeting card and agendas. We'll talk about that in a minute. And, and Mary's gone in there and said, look, as a company, we've got three main challenges we're facing as a company. And there they are there. And she's put them on the meeting note. And this in the Strata, this app's called StratApp. I'll show you in a minute. And in StratApp, you've got this live collaboration space. So everything we type here is shared live and we don't have to be in the room. It can be. Um, so you can run this asynchronously as well. So you don't even have to have the meeting at the same time. That's kind of a trend in the US at the moment. So we'll all participate when we're free. Um, but yeah, generally in Australia, we're in the same room and maybe one or two people are dialing in. So Mary or the chairperson could be here capturing the consensus. Um, but most importantly, this is where I've added my preparation notes for the meeting. So I've gone in here and just created a private note. So when you click here, it launches a private note field, right? So I um, won't type in there yet. So on this first challenge, we're only converting 5% of free trials to paying clients, which for this business may be a problem. For others, it might not be. And you can see here, I've got my prep notes, right? I've got two ideas that I'm ready to contribute to the meeting. So most directors or participants in meetings will sort of do their prep for each challenge. So it's framed by the meeting host. And you can see there I've gone through and listed out my ideas to, you know, contribute to the meeting when I turn up to the meeting. So there's my private space. The other thing you can do in Strata, depends on your culture, is you could have, you know, the directors that have contributed something can actually then make this live in the meeting. So everyone can participate here, see it, and it's live. And so instead of talking to it, you can just say, hey, here's my contribution here, here's my contribution here, and it's all live, and we can all type and share um, our thoughts on this. On the right-hand side, we've got the collaboration happening on the right, so you don't have to go to 
another app to sort of ask questions or anything on the, on the side here. So um, you're all in the one space. You can just say here, hey, Harry, or in this case, Mary, um, what do you think about Canny? So I'll just do another shout out because I know a lot of you um, are in the product space, product company space. So um, on this challenge number two, we need a better in-app user feedback loop to complement analytics. So, you know, capturing feedback and ideas and suggestions for the roadmap from users. And in Strata, we use this great product called Canny, canny.io, check it out. And you'll see it's integrated inside the app so their users can interact with us and there's great functionality in the back end. Saves us building all of that. So we use Canny for that. So there's a bit of a shout out. So there you go. Um, I, we can interact on the right. It's got structure, um, Re reacts and everything else, usual stuff. So, this is just a great technique, right? So I know we all go to meetings with agendas and here's a typical great board meeting agenda set up. So last meeting minutes, challenges, therefore those are there there. So you put them on the agenda and then make sure you uh, put them here ready to type up the ideas and notes, the consensus, right? So this would be our decisions we're making. So we've got everyone's feedback and we're gonna go, right, we're gonna implement uh, Canny. Actually, I think Kenny, that was for the uh, this one here. It doesn't matter. Um, you get the idea. So the consensus notes would be here, the live notes. And then I could make these, keep them live or private in terms of my preparation. Just depends on your culture and how you want to interact. So I think, look, much struct more structure, more organization, everything in one place. So instead of Google Doc, like Google, the Google Doc idea is good. Um, but here, not only is it in one place, it's interactive and you've got all the stuff relating to it is all in the one place. And you can see that this board meeting belongs to our goal to launch a new brand, in this case, off the strategy tree. So the, even the meeting itself has got a context to where it belongs. And in this case, launch a new seafood brand is the one goal of the company, which you can see it there on the strategy tree. So this is all inside the app. Um, we're under the meetings part of the app here under the workspace. That's where we're doing the meeting. You can see workspace there. But you can see here's the strategy tree. So this company, here's our strategy. We've got this goal that's breaking down to these sub goals. And this is the second point on the agenda today. How do the directors actually see what's going on inside the company? Meetings are pretty static and, you know, one thing, capturing ideas and actions and decisions. But wouldn't it be wonderful if the directors can in one click on this sub goal, everything to do with that sub, sub goals at my fingertips. And you can see the management team have set some objectives for the quarter, which are running behind. You can see all the conversations, meetings that sit below this files, like everything's in one place. So I think that for me is probably one reason I don't like board meetings. I'm still on a couple. And um, if it was, I don't really like listening to the management team talk operationally for hours and hours and hours. And, you know, you got three hours of sort of brain dead sort of operational um, regurgitation of you know all the things they're doing i know they're doing great things but the directors are there really to try and solve problems and to see the progress and and want to contribute to the progress all directors are trying to contribute wherever they can so the more things are laid out live and interactive particularly in this day and age where we're flying around or working remotely or we've got cross-border teams if everyone has this picture and in one click can see what's going on at every point in the tree and then i mentioned on the, under that goal, there was objectives. Well, there's an OKRs page built into the app down here. And you can see as a director, I can come in and go, right, we set three objectives for the quarter. Some of them have got key results and some of them are not progressing. Some of them are running a bit behind on this. What's going on here? And one click, I'm into that thing. And it's the same user experience, right? So I'm not having to learn the app. It's every time I open something, it's the same. It always looks the same. and Again, everything's at my fingertips. And as a director, and again, this depends on the culture. There's no hard and fast rules here. I think gone are the days where we say, hey, non-execs don't have access to systems. We just send them paper 72 hours before the board meeting and they sit there having read the paper, all of the documents. I mean, those days are gone. These days, I think anyone under 55 or 60, in my experience, not wanting to judge on age, I mean, it can, um, it's not really a criteria these days more and more but people are tech savvy. So, you know, if you've got a sales and marketing background, you might want to go through the CRM before the board meeting. If you've got an operational background, you'd love to go through particularly an app like this, business operating system, everything at your fingertips, 
what's the culture, what's the heartbeat, what's falling behind, where can we invest expertise, knowledge, money, etc., to help move the company forward. So it just depends on your background. But I think the trend is directors are increasingly tech savvy, time poor, don't want to read lots of paperwork, would rather just see it really what's happening, not someone's summary or interpretation of it. And that's the power of this app, everything at your fingertips. Let's go back to the board meeting. So this is, uh, you know, you can keep a, you can come back to this later, but uh, this is your cl classic agenda for a board meeting or management. If you had a monthly management meeting with your exec team, you could probably mirror it. So remember the role of directors in a, in a board is to focus on strategy, finance and governance. They're the three things. So shouldn't really be getting into a lot of HR or operational um, or logistics type detailed conversations. So it should be solving the challenges of the day per Harry's point. And I just bang it right at the beginning of the agenda. So get that when everyone's fresh, get their contributions. That's also a great way to get them involved in the meeting really early. So there's nothing worse if you're a really enthusiastic director and you're sitting there for 90 minutes before you really get a, asked a question or an opportunity to contribute or think. It just drives me nuts. It's expensive. You've got people sitting there who are keen to help. And uh, so getting straight to the cru crux of where can they help, frame it. So Mary's done a great job here. These are the three challenges I'm facing as a CEO. And then we can all prepare, depending on how diligent we are. I'm very diligent. I know Harry, so there you go. I would have uh, done this prep, I'm sure, um, just by nature. And then you can choose whether you make that live and share it or just talk to it in the meeting and then type in the consensus on the live notes. At the end of this meeting, the chairman can come over here and make it complete. And then the live notes can't be edited thereafter. So they can only be edited while the meeting's active and the members get notified when there's status changes and so forth. So you get that little bit of control as well, right? This is what we discussed in the meeting. Back to the agenda. So then we could go from challenges onto strategy. So in this case, you'd be talking to the strategy tree. So are these still our goals and sub goals? Is this still the direction for the company? And then of course you move on to objectives. So how are we going with the objectives for the quarter? Or you could look back and go, how did we go last quarter, et cetera, et cetera, right? And take that view. So sort of stay at that strategic level with the team, really important. So that's all at your fingertips. And then of course, go through the financials and the directors would have prepared the questions on financials. And then whatever you do on governance and compliance, which tends to be uh, country or region specific uh, these days, and then any other business that's been added to the agenda. So you can add it sub agenda items, just, you know, goes down two levels. There's also a clock here. So you can, as you're running the meeting, you can say, right, we'll start there. And you just keep in track. And then when you move on, everyone's got an idea of how long we're spending on each of the things. Okay. So that's basically how the live meeting note works as well as that sort of best practice feel for how to run the meeting and engage everybody and make sure you're preparing well as a participant, participant beforehand, because someone's taken the moment, usually the CEO or MD to frame the challenges that you want the meeting to address. Same logic applies if you're leading an operations team, then you would frame the challenges having collected people's input and then the leaders of that would come into this same environment and you'd have this meeting as uh, the management meeting for operations or HR, et cetera, et cetera, same thing. Okay, so let's have a look at what else we had on here. Chairperson's role in resolutions. Okay, so I think of the last uh, 200 board meetings I've attended, I noticed this gets skipped over and it's actually formally trained in the UK Australia, I think Singapore as well. I'm not sure about the US, but this, if you're chairing the meeting and there's lots of conversations on, you know, ideas and interaction, everything else. And then as you make the resolution, so you really, as a chairman should be reading those out because you normally have a note taker in these meetings, right? But if you don't, you can do it live in Strat app or the note taker could be doing this live in Strat app. So it's important to separate the conversation of ideas and thoughts and input to the actual resolutions. And if it's a board meeting, the chairman should be reading those out as affirmed by the attendees of the meeting. So this is really important. So don't um, sort of gloss over it or yeah, I'll catch for that and I'll type it up later. And, and then you have this sort of disagreement later on when people get the minutes and another best practice, don't circulate the minutes 72 hours before the minutes should be, uh, sent within seven days of the meeting, usually within 72 hours after the meeting. So 
this is the record. Now in Strata, you don't send anything. It's all live and in front of you. So all the attachments, everything is in one place. You don't send it. They just get the updates. So you kind of circumvent that. Um, so if you're um, doing the old practice of sending out board papers 72 hours before, and that's the first time the directors are seeing the minutes of the last meeting minute, you should, uh, you should change that. It's not good, good governance and, uh, and can also lead to unnecessary disagreement or misunderstandings. So, as, so in the meeting, invest our own offshore QA team in the Philippines. So if that's the resolution we're going to do, the chairman should be reading those out. In Strata, it's you type it as a separate section and then asynchronously or live as an attendee, you're going to see those resolutions laid out. So we typically put these at the top. You can drag and drop all of this stuff. It just picks up and drags and drops. What am I clicking the wrong thing? But it doesn't matter. Um, you can drag and drop to reorder these. Okay. So... Um, that's an important point on resolutions. Now let's talk about cascading. So the, you've got two options here uh, in the meetings, right? With the other, other participants, you can add all actions here in the meetings. You can go to, you know, if you've got a high volume of actions, you can rapid fire down the side here. And that way, all of the directors have got from this meeting, the tasks or actions linked directly to it, and they can see the follow up. So if you were going to say, um, uh, find out the pricing of Kenny. I love plugging out the tech that I respect. And let's say we're going to give that to Mary and we want her to do it by say Friday, let's save that. And not everyone needs to, cause it's going to create its own card. So we'll all see it. We don't all need to be members of that. So I'm going to deselect that and save it. You can rapid fire and add more, right? So when you come to review the last meeting, You'll see here all the actions, whether they've been, tick, you know, Mary ticked it off, you'll see it ticked off here on the right hand side when we come to do the meetings. Um, in Stratup, you can actually also do all of this inside the app, right? So, task risk idea can be part of your conversation in the board meeting on the social threat. So, if we've got, say, for risk, um, so let's have, uh, let's put a risk here, what's related to the topics. So, Offshore in QA team. Okay, so uh, need to be arm's length on employee contracts in the Philippines. So that would be a risk I'm identifying, and I might decide to leave the members on there as we manage those risks. And you can see that's been tagged a risk, and it's got its own card now. So talk about cascading, right? So we're having this meeting, driving at the goal. Participants can see this. Everything you create on the right will show under tasks. Risks will show on the risk log because they get centrally collected inside the apps. You can manage all risks. And you can come in here and say, look, probability is low. Impact's probably low. It's not the end of the world. You know, if you don't do this, it's better we don't. So we'll uh, use a third party lawyer, right? So uh, I'll give another plug. Sure 360 There you go. Great company. It's many great companies in the Philippines, but Sure 360 and Clark. Fantastic operators, very experienced. We use them. Um, we use a few different teams, but uh, just give those guys a plug for this call. Okay, so um, might be worth. So we're on the uh, as you go down here. By the way, as you're drilling down the strategy, you can see this one has um, two below it. So if we click on this, you can see it just keeps the breadcrumb going. So that was the goal. That's the sub goal. And now below that, we can see these two actions. And then again, if I click this, everything's at my fingertips for that thing. So it's like a workspace for each thing. That's what I was going to say before. The, there's no one size fits all. I was talking about whether directors should have access to software. That's what I was getting at. So my view is everyone, directors, management team, everyone should have access to this. Transparency, Ray Dalio, Simon Sinek, uh, Ricardo Semler, like that thought leadership is well and truly established. So embrace it. Everyone, you know, above and below you, not everything goes to plan. Don't need to hide it. Just be open. The more clarity there is that the organization uh, will be more resilient. It'll be more innovation you'll have. So just make it transparent. And, but then culturally you've got to decide and just sort of set those ground rules. Do you want directors diving in here, making suggestions, comments, um, giving encouragement, et cetera, et cetera. I think that just depends on the size of the company. And the nature of um, who's on the board versus the management team. Obviously, if there's plenty of overlap on those two, 
then there'll be more interaction. The board will get drawn into conversations on these cards. So no hard and fast, just do what suits you. For bigger companies, generally what happens is the directors will browse and uh, contribute or note down the things they want to raise at the next meeting. That's generally what happens. They can prepare privately on the meeting notes, you know, so I might come in here and say, you know, here are my thoughts for next meeting. And then I'll just, you know, ask about the um, online registrations, for example. You know, that OKR we saw that was in the red before. Or I could actually, if the culture is more about um, this, you know, we're more interactive, sorry, before, the culture is more like live and interactive, you're less than 50 people, you're a startup, you're a venture capitalist, and you just want to jump in here and go, hey guys, um, you know, uh, hey guys, what's uh, what's happening? Happening here, can I help? Are we using uh, Zendesk? You know, whatever thoughts you got, just jump in here. It just depends on your culture. So I love this culture where it's interact interactive and everyone's trying to contribute and you assume positive intent. Great American expression for social collaboration, right? Assume positive intent. I know I didn't write there. How's your day? Hope you're feeling good. This is wonderful. I just went straight to ask you a few questions. That's how I operate after dealing so long with um, particularly the Philippines culture. It's just straight to the point. I love it. So assume positive intent um, and let anyone participate. That's generally my approach, particularly for startups. And if you're 50, even 100 employees and below. I know above 100 employees, you've got middle management. There's more sensitivities. Um, senior management on top of that and then uh yeah so you might you know just set the ground rules but the whole company will benefit from having everything at the fingertips just this is gold like absolute clarity and speed and meetings that are run like this with a timed agenda moving on to strategy timed agenda clear challenge set in the beginning you know preparing and everything else so what else was i supposed to share so we've done the cascading oh yeah i said there's two choices so you can add a whole bunch of stuff here on the right, or even directors, you can say, hey, how about we put this work along? So we're having a campaign in uh, Singapore, it's loading slow on Zoom, here we go. Um, and you can say, okay, is it related here? Air freight deal. Actually, this packaging plant, it could be here. So I'll just, we'll just open this up. And what we'll do is we'll create a task right in the spot where it belongs instead of on the board meeting. So you've got, you know, about, um, Singapore company for shipping. Right. So you could, you know, if that suited the culture, you could just go straight to putting where it, where it needs to go. And we'll say, we'll give that to Mary and not everyone needs to be copied on it. And there that is. So you could actually run the meeting live, um, putting things where they belong. And then as an individual director, I'd still be able to keep track of all this. There's all these tracking and filters and everything else in the app. But generally, I think for board meetings, you probably put the actions here and then create related through on the other, other topics. Okay. So, uh, I'm back. Under the social, I think I've covered everything um, from me over the years, and I encourage you to do the same and check it out and enjoy this uh, webinar series. Short, sharp experience, and I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope we've covered all of this for you. Shared versus private spaces. Okay, I missed that. Done everything else. Um, I'll do it quickly. So let's say. Um, we create a task here, right? So we've got this task for Mary. Let's just edit it. We'll make that, let, let's say I'm going to do it so you can see my private space. I'm going to make it due on Friday. So if I jump over to my workspace and you'll see as it loads there on Friday, I've got this task in my private workspace. Now I could be doing my, you know, other things here. Um, there you go. It's Friday. That's my task. Go home early, but, uh, you can see here, you know, everything that comes in uh, from across the whole app, whether it's on the strategy tree or the objectives, it all comes into your private space. So you still get to organize your own day as directors, management team, this works for everyone, um, everyone except guest users, right? So you just need to make sure you're adding 
the directors and executives and consultants you work with a lot, you'd add them as members, not guests. If you add people as guests, they can just see what you added, add them to, not the whole picture. So you haven't got guests browsing through your strategy and all the other confidential information. They can only see the actual cards that you add them to. Okay, I think I've finally covered everything on the agenda. Good luck. I'd love your feedback. Please put some questions and uh, we'll get back to you and we'll follow this up with uh, an email out so you can get a copy of this uh, webinar thereafter. Okay, thank you very much.